testing. You can hear this one better, right? Well, then I'll sing into this one. That way you won't have to hear me. <laughs> Can't ask me about the house of the fairy because I don't hear it. Can't hear with this one. Testing. Better. 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 Yeah, I guess I'm in church here. I'm in trouble with what they're doing during the winter, too. Yeah. Testing, one, two, three. Yeah. If they finally got somebody in. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Yay! Now you guys are really out of luck because I can sing with the both of them. Uh oh! <laughs> All right, what do you want to sing? I don't know all the words. You're going to have to lead. <laughs> well, welcome to Heritage Hill, guys. Um, I know that you came to see me today. <laughs> I'll be riding around in the golf cart. Just wave at me. That's all you're going to get of me. The uh, celebrities should be up here shortly. They were just finishing up something down by Fur Trade. So when they get up here, let's give them a great round of applause. Let's see if we can practice that. Come on, guys. I think that was okay, but I think when they get here, you can do better. Right. Remember, they came from a long ways away. Yeah, the 1700s. No. 1800s. I don't read. I don't read. This side. They're over here. They're over there. Yeah. <laughs> <Get her. laughs> Aaron says thank you. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming. My name is Erin. I am the Director of Education here at Heritage Hill. Um, we're really excited to have um, this event and to have Lucy and Dean here. So you're not here to listen to me, so I will pass it off to them. Thanks everyone for coming. Thanks Erin. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you uh, have been to Heritage Hill before? Do you come here a lot? Yeah? This is my fourth visit to Heritage Hill. Lucy, this my is... My second. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you for coming this morning. It's uh, we're, Our Little House cast has been uh, privileged to be part of the uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder days for a number of years now. I think we've been coming here for, I want to say, six, seven, eight, nine years. Different groups of us uh, for this event. So it's nice to come to Green Bay. It's what a beautiful day we've got. We certainly... Yeah. We've had some less than beautiful days here, and this is really a perfect day for this. Um, it's fun. I was just gonna, I'll just start off Lucy by just saying that this is um, this is the second time that Lucy and I have done an event together, and it's it's a pleasure for me to uh, uh, to do this with Lucy because, of course, we started our little house experience on exactly the same day. September 20, uh, pardon me, May 22nd, 1979 was our first day of, uh, of shooting on the series. I, I, know, I know that that's indelibly imprinted into my head because my birthday was on the Saturday before and then started, I graduated from college, celebrated my 23rd birthday and the day after that started working on Little House with you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, had a, we had a very, um, my time went on a little longer, but we had a we had a very similar experience because we were step both stepping into this finely tuned machine that Little House was. And what do you remember? I, about that? I just I didn't know what to expect, and I was so glad you were with me. Yeah. And that we were siblings. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I've I've often said that yeah, if if, uh, if I could have a real older sister, I'd want it to be Lucy because she's just. Oh. Aww, that's just, sweet, Dean. No, just a great, yeah. well, no, I can drive back at you. Well, that's very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Your 
brother. I had two older brothers, and I think having you as the younger brother really would have helped. <laughs> Well, we had, we had uh, we had fun. I remember that. I don't know what your recollections were, but that first day driving up the hill from the little parking lot in Tapo Canyon, and where I remember driving up the hill in the what one of the vehicles, and we drive into that enclosure where the little house was and the barn, and there are like eighteen trucks there that from camera trucks, sound trucks, all the the livestock, the wagons, the you know, the dressing rooms, makeup and hair, all that stuff. And it was like this little city that was dropped down in this space. Right. And it was really cool to see that, to think, my God, we're a part of this. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. And I think people don't, people, people don't realize how, what a big, um, how many people and how much equipment is involved in making a television show you know it looks so it looks so stark when you're looking at the pictures on the screen but what's going on behind it on the other side of the that where that picture is being taken is just a huge amount of people and equipment and it all is designed to make this wonderful illusion happen right and, you can yeah. tell if you ever watch the credits at the end of the shows all those names you know spinning around yeah so, yeah and and our group was relatively small by comparison to what crews are today because you know we shot with one or two cameras now series regularly shoot with four or five cameras every day mm -hmm. you know we shot with a couple when we were trying to make time but now everybody shoots with multiple cameras television is shot in a very different way than it was when we were shooting television right yeah, yeah. I mean it's, it's much more like a feature film now Television, yes, yeah. but you know, but uh, yeah, we went very fast. But it was just I. But the fun thing was to step into this world and see all these people and all this equipment. Realize that they were all dedicated to making this wonderful illusion happen for the audience. Which and then of course that illusion went on for ten years. And it was, you know, it's. Uh, it's fun for both of us to uh, to know that we are attached to that in some way. That special that special experience that was Little House that has touched people for generations now and all, all, all over the, the world. Right. Yeah. Gonna yeah. Say that. Go go ahead and please say it. <laughs> no, it's um, it ranks second after the Harry Potter series in young adult fiction or historic whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, worldwide. I mean, it's it's such a high seller. Isn't it's, that something? Yes. That's, yeah. And of course, and Laura wrote her first book in 1932 at the age of 65. You know, she had been she'd been she'd been toying with writing for years, writing for local magazines and local newspapers, and but with her daughter Rose's help, she decided that it was time to write her life story and. The first book published in 1932, and then the, book, the succeeding books happened during the remainder of the 30s and into the early 40s, and then of course the series comes on really just so quickly later, relatively, when you think about that. From the time that the books were first published to the time that the series went on the air, it was only 42 years. Now it's been 43 years from the time that the series first went on oh, the air right. to today. How many of you had Little House read to you as children? I'm sure. I mean, so many, yeah. About a third. Yeah. yeah. Little House was not part of my family reading experience growing up. We just, we just that Laura Eagles Wilder wasn't part of it. But, um, but obviously for many people, it was. And I've been incredibly... Uh, moved through the years to find out the number of people and multi-generations of people grandmothers with their daughters with their granddaughters and you know having seen those books and um, realized that this is a multi-generational experience so uh, it's a great thing little house has been a great thing on that level that it has connected families um, through lots of different time to through, through different periods in our contemporary history. The Little House remains this sort of hub of something that's good and decent and, and simple.
that people love. I was like talking about Little House being about the time when America was innocent. You know, it wasn't easy, but it was innocent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's real history. Yeah. That's, that's what I yeah. appreciated, and being able to portray a character who actually existed. I thought that was really cool. It was more responsibility. Sure. Yeah. 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 You know, there's there was a in the in the little house world uh, in the book in the television world there was there was this in relation to our coming into the show there was this big brouhaha that developed about how the character's name was how my character's name was pronounced <laughs> and it's, you know, it was really um, it became a real problem for book lovers who saw that we had mispronounced the name and I really for years racked my brains about how this could have happened how did how did we mispronounce the name and after years of thinking about it it popped into my head how this happened how this horrible mistake occurred it was Lucy's fault <laughs> Lucy was the first person on the set, on, on camera, May 22nd, 1979, <laughs> at about 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Lucy was the first one to say, Laura, this is my brother, Almanzo. And Laura responded with, nice to meet you, Manly. Now, it was very clear how manly should have been said, but there was no correction made on Almanzo. Michael didn't correct it. The script supervisor didn't correct it. What were you thinking when you said, when you said Almanzo? Yeah. I thought it sounded nice. <laughs> Almanzo. <laughs> but, but had you read the next line? You know, or nice to meet you, manly? I didn't, Did they, you I didn't think about that? Probably didn't. I'm shocked because you're really very you're very thorough in your preparation. I'm surprised that you oh, didn't put that so together. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> no, we did rehearse the scene, and no one said a word. No, no one said a word. They trusted you. They trusted you because you were a teacher. You should have known. No, but it sounds nicer, Almanzo, rather than Almanzo. <laughs> Don't you think? You know, I, I see your point. Oh, thank it has, you. It has, a, it has a nice rounded quality to it. But, thank you. Yeah. But it was, but it, as it turned out, we got letters from people with the name phonetically spelled, offering this correction. And once we had doubled down on it, once, you know, six episodes had been shot, there was no way we could change. So it became forever Almanzo, and it's just something, it wasn't, and, and I wasn't totally convinced that we were wrong until I was in Ma uh, Malone, New York, and there was a CD in the, in the little gift store there, and it was Laura speaking. And it was one of the, I think maybe the only time that Laura's voice had ever been recorded. And it was something like a minute and 30 seconds or two minutes or, you know, it's a very short amount of time on the CD where we actually hear her voice. And she talked about, at the end of the recording, she talked about the man of the house, Almanzo. And that was it. And I, you know, I was at that point, this was years and years after the fact when nothing could be done about it. It became clear in that moment that we had in fact made this mistake. <laughs> She knew how to pronounce her husband's name. We didn't. And it all started with Lucy. It was just an alternative pronunciation. <laughs> it was an alternative fact. Because all the words in the dictionary, as you know, there's more than one way to pronounce them. Was, was there the name Almanzo in the dictionary? Not the one I had. <laughs> But uh, seriously, that name, though, is derived from a, a longer Arabic name. And what, what was that story? Um, oh, you tell the story. No, I think you tell it better. Oh, I don't know if, if you've heard this. During the Middle Ages, or the Crusades, there was a, a warrior named Wilder. That goes back. And he was, he was injured in battle. <coughs> and this Arab named... Al-Mansur saved his life. 
I think he pronounced it El Mansur. Oh. <laughs> He <laughs> saved Warrior Wilder's life, and from then on, the family through different generations would name a son. They shortened it to Al Manzo. So that's how, because people often have asked me why my brother has a Spanish name. Yeah, I thought it was Spanish too. I know, or, or Mexican. Yeah. Hispanic. Exactly. And I, I would say, no, it's not. They, they always have trouble pronouncing it, as a matter of fact. That's very interesting. Yeah. But it's it's Arabic in origin. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> what, uh, we're we're going to open this up to people's questions, because it's always the most fun to get people's, uh, you know, their thoughts about things. But you know, since we've done this so little, what share with people maybe one of your favorite memories of your what are your favorite experiences on the show? Were there anything that stands out for you that was really oh, just special? Well, my first day, it was embarrassment uh, with Michael Landon. He was directing the episode. It was back to school, part one, part two. Yes. And he, he kept, I was supposed to walk down the street or something, and I, he, he kept saying, go further back, Sugar. Sugar, go over there. Go over there. And I kept looking around and thinking, who is he talking to named Sugar? <laughs> Because my father used to call me Sugar, and I thought, really? Yeah, well, that must have been fun. He was from the South. No. <laughs> so after about five minutes, I, I was just very confused. Finally, someone said, "He's talking to you." And so I it was just—it was just a height of embarrassment with Michael. The first, you know, the first minute I'm working with him, but, but he had a fabulous sense of humor. So it didn't matter. And he probably called Sugar. Well, you can tell. Didn't he call all new ladies Sugar? I think lots of the ladies were Sugar. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 That explains it. What about yeah. you? <clears throat> um, let's see. I, I, my one of my first experiences, not as maybe not as happy an experience, but memorable, was my first time driving the buckboard and. Being at the top of the hill and the, the wind, you know, as we're trotting down the road and the wind picks up and my hat lifts off my head and the guy doesn't want to have his hat lift off, so I reached back instinctively to grab the hat and drop the line on the horse and the horse felt the pressure go off his mouth and they just, they sort of took off to the, you know. <clears throat> and one, you know, in a team they have blinders on, you know, so one isn't really seeing what the other is seeing. And they, one one met one part of the team was taking the other part of the team directly into an oak tree that was coming right at them. You know, the one horse couldn't see it, and the other one, that's all they saw. So uh, it was a little, that was a, a tense moment, and Michael had some, uh, you know, had some humorous words uh, for that <laughs> the first day, uh, on my first day, and... Um, but you know that's it was. But everyone was so relaxed and comfortable. You know, the we had great wranglers. We had everybody. Everybody who worked on the show was so good at what they did, and they were so comfortable. And Michael ran such a, and Kent McRae, who was our producer, ran such a relaxed, professional set. And it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't that it was. You know, it was very efficient, but it never felt. You never felt like you were in a hurry. It just worked really well. No. And no, there was no yelling. There was no, you know, it was just, it was just really easy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the technical people were from Bonanza, right? So, yes. I mean, so they, they had shorthand. Yeah. No, exactly. They'd known each other. All these guys had known each other, men and women, had known each other for 20 years before they started with Michael on, uh, on, on Little House. And yeah, it just moved. I think we, our, our little company was probably one of the envies of Hollywood in terms of the hours that people worked. You know, it was like nine or ten hour days, as opposed to 14, 15, 16 hour days, which is not uncommon in series television even today. So it's, um, you know, Michael really worked efficiently and wanted people to have a life away from the set. And he wanted to have, of course, he needed to have some time away from the set because he was writing and he was, you know, he was doing all the other things he was doing. And he had four children at the time. I think more than that. Oh, it was more. Four, four or five. And he had to adopt it. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, but yeah. So Michael had a lot going on, and so he needed, you know, he needed the show to work well, and he needed his life away from the show to work well. And you know, he worked really hard to make sure that that happened. So we we were fortunate to be part of that. Uh, I wonder if, if there are questions that people have. Let's let's open this up, and I see a question here. You two were just right for your part. I'm wondering what the audition process was um, for both of you for the show. So the question was about, and first it was really the comment that we were so nice together, that we were together, and what was the audition process for the show? What do you remember about it, Lucy? Because we never auditioned together. Huh. You know, that was, yeah. they, that's interesting, that they never paired us together. I know. How did they know? Yeah. Yeah, well, they looked at our pictures and said, well, these two will look good together. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, because they, never, they literally never put us together until we didn't meet until our first day I know, working together. I know. Um, I auditioned twice. The first time with the casting director, just her and me, and she said, come back and pull your hair back and don't wear any makeup. I can do that. So I came back, and there was Michael Landon, sitting in the corner with his legs crossed, he had on boots, and he, he just was smiling and very casual. And I, I thought, oh my God. Anyway, I did this scene once. It was a scene where Eliza Jane is writing her name on the blackboard. I don't know if you remember uh, from that episode. And he, he said, all right, he said, do it again and be more strict. So I <laughs> was more strict. I left. Uh, two weeks went by. Nothing. Nothing. I thought that's the end of that. And then you. Well, I, it's, I had a similar experience with the two weeks. I mean, after I know I auditioned four times. Oh. Yeah, it was four times. Three times with Susie, and the last time with Michael on the wall. Did you? Were the there time. other young men? Starting, you know. I'd, Starting off, there was the stack of pictures a foot high on, oh, on no. Susie's desk, and then the second time it was six inches high, and the third time it was, you know, <laughs> two inches high, and the last time I came in with Michael in the room, there were four pictures on the table. Oh, gee. Yeah, so, but it, we've all been through this. I mean, you go into an audition, and you're surrounded by people who look essentially like you do. Because that's, you know, they've gone through the player's guide, and they've reached out to their agent contacts and they're describing you know there's breakdown services where characters are described i never i never read what the breakdown was for our characters i have no idea what it's no. like um but you can be pretty sure when you walk into a room that you're going to see be surrounded by people who look essentially the way you do so the first time it was a lot of people and then the second time it was fewer and i think the third time maybe there was no one else when i was there and then the fourth time I didn't see anybody else there. And then, but I think we may have been there on the same day. I mean, I, you know, Michael was just, the impression was indelible. You know, I, I always think the Carrera sunglasses and the cigarette and the teeth and the shirt opened up down to here and the jeans sprayed on with a gun and the snake skin boots. And I mean, Michael was a, just a big time television star. Gold chains. Gold chains. Yeah. And, and, and tan, you know, he lived out in Malibu, so he, you know, he had this dark, dark tan. Um, and it wasn't a farmer's tan, it was a, you know, it was a, I think it was a full-on tan. And, uh, you know, he just, he was quite a presence. And I'm sure, you know, for a young guy, I just, wow, this is the real deal. This is, this is what a, a big-time television star looks like. What was your reaction for some? The same, he was like a dude. <laughs> but anyway, so Jake, you know, come back to your question. We never, I think that they had a really good sense of what they were looking for. And I think they had the sense of what we each were like individually and that we would be good together. And it was sort of instantly really good. I could just tell we were gonna have a good time together. Did Michael Landon have the final say? Did, so the question was, did Michael Landon have the final say? Yes, Michael had the final say on, beyond the pilot, where I think the network had a, a say in the casting, but beyond that, I think Michael had complete say on all the casting. Uh, I think the network was never involved in the casting. They just found out that we were the ones. And I don't think that necessarily thrilled them, by the way. I don't think they liked that. 
they wanted, because the network wanted to have a say, but they didn't get a say, because Michael got what he wanted, because he had the he had the biggest show on the network at that time, and Michael was who he was, and he picked his cast. So you know, we were we were we were fortunate in that way. We only had to really make one person happy. We didn't have to please a committee. So. Yes, Martha. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, you, you are you asking a question? Or is that a statement? Okay, you're asking me. So the question was, did I audition for the role of Adam Kendall? And no, I did not audition for that part. Um, I was, yeah, I don't think I was on the radar at all at that point. Um, I had done, before, just uh, the year before, I had done a movie of the week for CBS called Forever. Which is based on the Judy Bloom novel Forever. Sue, how are you? How are you? Um, so I had done that, and I think that um, I think somehow that was brought to Michael's attention, or Melissa had seen the movie. And it was perfect for you know it was perfect for Melissa at that time. It was this coming of age love story. I did this with Stephanie Zimbalist, and. Uh, and uh, I think that's how it, that's what got it started for me. But yeah, I wasn't on the radar at all when the Adam Kendall role was being cast. Yes. How many years were we acting on the show, Lucy? Um, I was just on one full season and then I came back for like, three specials or two parts. You did After 18 that. episodes, apparently, all together. Right, According right. to your Wikipedia page, you did Ooh, Do you get on my Wikipedia? I, I was stalking your Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and you, how many seasons? Um, and then I did from 79 through 83, so I was involved for five seasons. And uh, so I, and I did 60, I have a number of, I, I, I'm never quite clear on the number. I, I can tell you honestly, I've never sat and added it up, but I think it's right around 65 episodes. Wouldn't like Wikipedia that. know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they don't list the episodes individually, but they, they, they have a number on Wikipedia that they, stay, that they say it is, but I haven't stalked myself recently to read it. <laughs> yes. In the last farewell. Yes. Uh, with the t-shirt. So the question was about the last farewell and how how emotional was it when when we all were there looking at the at Walnut Grove in uh, in cinders. Um, you know, and of course, and we were not there when the explosions actually were filmed. Um, it was considered to be, and rightfully so, too dangerous to have so many people there. They had a very skeleton crew. The LA Fire Department was there with trucks and so on in case anything happened that got out of control. And there were probably you know, five high-speed cameras shooting and all these things from multiple angles. And um, but you know, so we saw it the next day. Now, now you weren't there for the very end, were you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Eliza Jane did not come back for the for the final walk out of town. Okay, um, but it was you know, the, the buildings had been blown up and there were smoke pots in the building. So you know, as we arrived, there's like it, it's like it just had happened, and it was very you know it was a surreal thing for everybody. And I think for those who had been working on the program for the whole ten years that had been on, it had to be particularly uh, you know draining to see this place where they had done all this work through the years gone. And and that was really a sign, it was over. You knew it was really over at that point. And I think Michael wanted it to be that way. He wanted it to, he wanted a clean closure so that he wasn't gonna get calls from NBC in five years and say, can we do another movie? And you know, the town was gone. And so everyone had moved on. And so there was, yes, if he'd been desperate to bring it back, he would have figured out a way to do that that would have been easy enough to do, but he didn't want to do that. And so he found a way to really put a button on it. But it was a hard, that was a, that was a challenging day. Beth Ingalls. Wow. In the corner hey. here. Yes.
Macbeth's great grandfather was was Charles' brother. <laughs> there you go. So. Yes. Tell you, uh, Beth, um, the question is, on on Beth's bucket list, she would like to meet Catherine McGregor. And I, you always wanted to be <laughs> Mrs. Olson. That's really something to aspire to. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, in all candor, I don't think Catherine knows who she is anymore much less who her character was. Um, I saw her probably for the last time about three years ago, and it took about 10 minutes to get her to connect that we knew each other. And she was invited to a birthday party for our producer last year. Um, he was trying to get as many people together as he could, and he offered to send a car to get her and bring her and she didn't even know what Little House was when she was asked. I think, I think, I think you should remember her. We should all remember her and we will remember her for the wonderful performances that she gave. But yeah, you just, you, it, you can. Um, you take brown eggs? Okay. Um, well, maybe you're a little more pragmatic about it than she was. But anyway, so that's really the story with Catherine in a nutshell. But she's, you know, I always remember her. So we'll all remember her fondly. And those of us who worked with her when she was herself, you know, really treasure those days. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. All what, right. What's at the top of your list? To make it baby. There you go. Oh, Next month, we. No problem. You, yeah, you look. You look like you're there. Well, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just letting that hair color change. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Um, thank you for that question, Beth. Um, yes. We've read all the books and we've bought all the series of the shows. And so last night, preparing for today, we watched the season where you guys both, season six, the first three episodes we watched. Mm -hmm. And um, Eliza Jane, um, how did it feel knowing that um, Albert was so looking forward to this beautiful teacher and then they made you out to be you know, the old spinster type. Oh, I know. I mean, it would just have to be like, oh, gee, this is my part. But if, if you looked at the illustrations in the book, Little Town on the Prairie, oh, right. Eliza Jane was not a beauty. Um, she had the little tight curls and, and the glasses, yeah. and they just made her look very stern. So you and, were okay with it, son? Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, yes. What? Well, we loved you. Oh, thank you. How, how could you not love her? Oh, really? <laughs> and how you, know. you called her Beth right away, you know, was cute. Yeah, no. <laughs> what was it? Uh, what, what did Almanzo call you? Lazy, lousy Liza Jane? Yes. Oh, right. Um, in Farmer Boy? I, I read in Farmer Boy. I think she had lice when she was little, and, and that's how that started. And then, the, lazy, then lazy. Laura and Carrie got wind of it, remember? And they in the books. Oh, okay. Ooh, I don't remember that part. Yeah. And that, okay. that, that okay. little jingle. Thing. Okay. Lazy, lousy. Liza Jane. Liza Jane. So there's a correction over here. Someone knows that 
No, so it really. God, what, a, what a meanie. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, Laura and Carrie did not like Eliza Jane, apparently, when they were little. Because I think Eliza Jane was under a little stress because she was living out of, you know, by herself. She was a homesteader. And a whole bunch of things were going wrong, as you know. The buzzards and drought and floods and meningitis and, I mean, all sorts of things. And that's, I figured out that's why perhaps she was cranky, a cranky as a teacher. <laughs> Apparently she didn't really like school teaching. Really? Yes. That was one of the few jobs that a, a unmarried woman could have. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And she was efficient enough that they wanted her. Yeah. Well, and you were you were, had that good bossy quality, you know. When Michael asked you for that serious, you know, oh, be strict. more, be stricter. Yes, you could. It was you were very prim. It was just it was like you would crack <laughs> if if someone pushed you the wrong way. It was you would just wrap really tight. You mean if someone discussed my pronunciation? Correct. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> yes, you would have been very upset that challenged. Uh, boy, it's it's really sunny out there for you guys. Uh, so we can't all stand underneath this. <laughs> what, uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Lucy Lee, from season eight, did you ever marry Mortimer? And how is he to work with Oh, that? um, <laughs> right, Laura and I go to Arizona to a yeah. teacher's conference. Okay. And uh, Laura falls in love with the, the Paul Blonde professor. And this um, she Mortimer. Did? No. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Sure. He was he was he was interested in her. Working on the farm. And Mortimer Wright had a crush on me, and I didn't care for him. Of course, I had a crush on the same fellow that I think Laura did. Yeah, but you know that actor apparently took a vow of silence for one year. He he thought of going into the priesthood and then changed his mind. But I I don't know if. Could anyone here not talk for one year? I mean... <laughs> wow. He literally took a vow of silence. For yes. Him. Yes. Yes. That's impressive. But I wonder, in the plot, where, where was Almanzo? You know Almanzo? <laughs> I mean Almanzo? You. Your character. <laughs> <laughs> Paul. Paul. Yeah, he, girl, yeah. You were out. <laughs> what? What? You weren't engaged then. We were married. Yes, they were. We were married. We were yeah, they were married. Oh, okay. Married. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and and she, I, I, well, I trust her. Concerned. <laughs> 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 I, I'm concerned too. I, I really have to look into this more. I need to go back and look at season eight and send Melissa. I know what was going on. The professor, the professor had a crush. On yeah, the Laura. professor had a crush on Laura, yeah, but yeah, she, well, she was encouraging him somehow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dean. Oh, you've got it right there. All right. <laughs> it's all on tape. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. The comment was about the documentaries that uh, that I've made. Through yeah. The years, uh, first one being Almanza Wilder Life Before Laura, which was really all about Farmer Boy, and, and the second one being a Little House of the Prairie: The Legacy of Laura Ingalls Wilder, which is. Um, the more recent one, and it really about Laura's journey as a writer and her life, and then circles back to how her life was echoed in the books that she wrote. And uh, and then more recently than that, although I wasn't involved in the production of the program, in the new DVDs that were done by Lionsgate, there's a really nice six-part documentary called The Little House Phenomenon, which which I was uh, really happy to be able to narrate. And. Uh, well, thank you. It's been it, the docs were a way of um, making a contribution. And Paz Fiddle, which I yes, Paz. And so in uh, in two thousand, 
<laughs> in 2010, I went to a Laura Palooza event. Imagine in in uh, Mankato, Minnesota, there was Laura Palooza, and I met Dr. Dale Cockrell, who was a wonder, eth wonderful ethnomusicologist there, and he was talking about a series of CDs that he had made um, under with using a grant from the National Endowment of the Humanities to recreate the music that Laura wrote about in her books. And in the books, Laura writes about 127 different American songs that Pa played on the fiddle or that were played in town celebrations. But the, the mission of Pa's fiddle, as he created it, and because he discovered, as a musicologist, as he was reading the books to his son, he started picking up on the titles of these songs. And said, so this is really a great look back at American history. And so he created this, he created this company and, and recorded this music. And when I listened to his presentation, I said to him at that point, we need to get this, this music needs to be on television. People need to hear this. And, you know, is that something that you'd like to work on? So we immediately agreed and it took a couple of years, but we created a PBS pledge special that featured this music shot and we shot it in Nashville in a place called the Loveless Barn in Nashville, Tennessee, with a great group of Nashville musicians and, you know, wonderful performers. Uh, Randy Travis, who is among those, um, is obviously in a very, in very bad shape now. And uh, I'm sure some of you here are on, you've seen that his Facebook page that's out about him, and he's really, he's really been through it. But we were really fortunate to have Randy come and sing for us, and, um, many others and uh, Ronnie Millsap was among those who came and sang and uh, it was just really a great night and so there was a DVD and a CD that was created out of it and uh, it was on PBS and so and then I guess two years later I, I, I acquired the little company from Dale Cockrell and so now 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 I have Paz Fiddle and so I share those CDs and we're trying to figure out how we're going to record another one, a different, you know, a different CD. And maybe with a more modern spin on the music, but use this, thinking about it, you know, as this wonderful, wonderful American, English, Scottish, Irish music, but spin it up maybe for today's audiences with, with artists that would put a contemporary spin on it. Because I think the music would translate wonderfully to a contemporary treatment. So we'll see. You're welcome. Welcome. Thank you. It's been a, one of the joys of my life. Can I add that you are the greatest ambassador for the show, bar none, in all ways, historically, how you communicate with people, and carrying on the legacy of Little House in the Prairie. Seriously, I'm being... I appreciate that. I, I, always, I always think that, and that's lovely of you to say that, I, you know, I always think that our castmate, Alison Arngren, who played uh, Nasty Nelly, you know, <laughs> this is really her business entirely. That's, you know, that's all she does is Little House. So she's really been fully invested in it, you know, all the way. But, but uh, Alison brings a different kind of spin to it. It's a little... You know, it's it's a little more twisted, <laughs> and, uh, and audiences love that. So yeah, I've tried to I've tried to um, nurture the show as it was and as it fits into the larger spectrum of American life. That's been my because I maybe I could be twisted about it, but I don't think the audience would like that. No. <laughs> Wouldn't be, no, wouldn't be according to your character. <laughs> no, wouldn't be. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Do you currently produce the uh, David Parody show? I do. So the question was, uh, I produce for NBC's Golf Channel now, and I don't play golf. But uh, but I seven years ago I was invited by. Um, an executive who I'd worked with on multiple occasions and other situations to produce a new talk show for Golf Channel called Faraday. And David is a wonderful, quirky, English-Irish, well, he's an Irishman, Northern Irishman, 
uh, with a really um, great backstory of um, toxic behavior and um, you know he's 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 if you could do make lots of mistakes in your life David has made them all and he comes from that that's what he leads with and people love sitting down to talk with David because they know that there's nothing that they can say that he would ever judge because he's done everything he's made all the mistakes and it's been just such a it's been really he's a really special talent I've often thought that if those how many have ever seen Faraday and really well I mean I'm just surprised there's even in this crowd that there would be just a few that would have seen it that's I mean it, that's really nice um, David is uh, David would have been a wonderful actor I think because he just occurs so naturally in front of the camera he's great on camera great voice I've never worked with anybody who reads voiceover copy as perfectly cold as he does and you can put a piece of paper in front of him and he just he, and, and he, boom he will read it and it's just perfect photographic memory oh uh, not even just his his understand he's able to read ahead you know he's reading and he's also scanning ahead so he knows what's coming and he just reads cold so well with such good meaning and occasionally you have to go back and say you know could you put a little more emphasis on such and such but basically he just comes right cold right out of the uh, computer and reads it perfectly but uh he's special he's a really special talent uh, i'm doing it i'm right now i'm in the middle of post-production on an episode with darius rucker how many of you know Darius? he's a wonderful country singer was you know was the front man for hootie and the blowfish for years and now is a wonderful country artist and so we sat down with darius uh in june in nashville and that episode is being finished now will air on august 20th channel so so uh, when, I, when I leave here tomorrow, I'm rushing back to keep working on Darius Rucker. So, yes. Do I still have I cinnamon chicken? Yes. What about cinnamon chicken? I know. Do you, do you have cinnamon chicken in your pail? <laughs> uh, the cinnamon chicken scene, people love the cinnamon chicken scene. Uh, that was at the end of Back to School in the, in the second, I guess it was the middle, the middle of the episode. Yeah, I think um, it was the end of the first part, I yes, think. Yes, right, the end of the first part. And uh, that, was, that was really fun, that little scene. Water, no. Yes, the mud. <laughs> the mud. I know. And it was crazy. The uh, well, the girls love talking about that. Allison particularly loves talking about that because, you know, uh, Allison and Melissa were very good friends. They played mortal enemies on the program, but they were really good friends, and they trusted each other. So. You know they could do all kinds of awful things to each other in these scenes and there was no hard feelings about it because they knew they were having fun and they were you know this this mud pile this lake they were in was a favorite resting spot for cattle and uh, any livestock that was in the area there was nothing pristine about this pond and uh you know so when you watch when you watch the girls trying to shove mud into each other's mouth you can only wonder about what was in that mud and uh they, they were very good natured about it and uh yeah we're going down there and dragging melissa out and throwing her out of the water and it was a trippy thing just a that was a fun little moment fun little moment and then pop beat me up for my for my kindness yeah any other questions yes the two nephews yeah two the two little monsters that came to visit i think that was season i want to say that was probably season eight something like that and um yeah just wonderful michael wrote that kind of 
fish out of water comedy really well and crafted this episode where the brother Royal's two sons come and just turn the house upside down and do every horrible thing that they can do it, all in the name of good fun for and teasing Uncle Manzo or it's actually Uncle Monzo then God, what a mistake everyone was doing it wrong uh, but yeah we had fun with that Michael had a good time writing those things and we had a, those were really fun things to do any other questions Yes. Uh, the question: How often does the cast get together? When was the so? When was the last time we all got together as a group? Well, Dan's dinner, I guess. Okay, that was a small group, yeah. And then of course we were together in Walnut Grove. Walnut Grove in 2014. How many? Of, right. I think there were ten of us. Ten for from that. the show. Yeah. We were and there. then yeah, and then we a group of us gathered for the Today program, and also in 2014. And uh, did a photo, did a photo session for Us Magazine at that time, but we usually work. In, we go out in smaller groups. It's usually it's two or three of us that come to places like Heritage Hill and visit. You know. And we're kind of spread out all over the country. I mean, there's a yeah. bunch in L.A., but yeah. Napa, Charlotte's in Napa. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen Grassley's in the San Francisco area. Berkeley, actually. Work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Pennsylvania at the moment. Yeah. I'm back and forth between Los Angeles and Orlando with the work, and Melissa lives in Michigan now. And That's right. Yeah. And uh, Melissa Sue lives in Canada. I'm sorry. Who is? Oh yes, right, right. She lived in New York for a period of time while her son was going to college there, but. Um, yeah, I think she's really at home north of the border. Yeah. And, uh, but she doesn't do, yeah, I think this is probably one of the last appearances she's done. The Little House coming to the, or the Today program was probably one of the last. The Genesee last year. Yeah, right. right? She, okay. Okay. So she's done a few. Anything else? Yes, Lauren. Yeah, I'm just curious, what are you doing these days? Are you retired from the business now? I'm, I am temporarily retarded. I was say retarded. <laughs> too, no. I'm, um, we're renovating a, a 1767 farmhouse in um, Berks County, Pennsylvania. It's between Reading and Allentown. So, yeah, I love history, obviously. It belonged to my grandmother and great aunt. So, yeah. It, Bed oh no, no. It'll never be finished. No. But, but I guess that's not the point. Yeah. It's just, yeah, the you know, crooked slanted floors and but they're deer and groundhogs and a white duck and streams and waterfalls. And it's and there's been so much rain, as you know. It looks like a jungle. Yeah. yeah. What's the best what's the most interesting part of refurbishing a 1700s house patience okay. there's a lot of critters get inside yeah i found a flying squirrel in the closet one day <laughs> and um of course mice and shrews i had never heard of a shrew i thought a shrew was a unpleasant woman <laughs> it's a relative of a mouse i never knew that wow i does know it look, does it look like a mouse? it's little tiny it's like a little tiny mouse okay yeah yeah okay. Wow. And that, and there was one of those in the bedroom last week. I mean, you have you, you. It's not for everybody living in an old house, as you know. Well, is it electrified? And... Yes, it, yes, it passed. Yeah. We were able to get it insured. <laughs> but it was how how thick are the walls? Very thick. It's made of field stone. That would have been this. That would be hard to do any work with plumbing. Does everything have to be surface mounted in the house? Is that how it works? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> surface mounted. Well, or or is there a facade between, say, a plastered wall and the field stone that's actually the outside wall? Is there is there a you know a space there so that pipes and wiring can be hidden? I, oh yeah. I mean, I, I you only know, see these pipes down on the. You know, there's no foundation in those days. They so it's just on the ground. There's no right. solid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, is so, it just the one? Is it just the one building, or is there a is there a little barn or a? There's a, a, a bank barn. They call them. There's a smokehouse, a milk house, and a summer kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, 
Really? And an outhouse? Yeah. And, and, and an outhouse. I should have tours. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, and an outhouse too, Martha asked? Uh, well, they, they uh, built a proper little little bathroom <laughs> toilet. Okay, toilet. In, in, inside Outs the house? No, outside. Outside? Outside? Yes. Wow. So is it is it attached to the house or is it completely separate? No, it's separate. It's a, looks like a little This really is an doll old house. house. Yes, sir. How many square feet is the interior oh. of the house? Um, Curious. Three, 3,000. So it's a big house. That's a big 3,000 is a pretty good size it's, house. It's three bedrooms. Okay, three big bedrooms. Little bedrooms. Three little bedrooms, <laughs> large common area, like a large kitchen. There, there are like two living rooms, but you know, okay. in the old days they had a big one and then a little one. And a more casual one, right? Yeah. The more, the more homey one. And fireplaces in every room, probably? Not now, just Not now. in two. Okay. Two sided. Well, this, wow, you yeah, need to you need to see pictures of this place. Uh, any 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 other questions where where the the sun is driving people away? What uh, any final questions? And we we should probably. Do you have a uh, trophy room of some sort at home? You got pictures up on the wall, sort of like place you go to the office and reminisce. In my office, I've got a few I've got a few things on the wall. We don't really. Now my wife has a picture that, um, my wife's also an actress, met her during the little house years and in, in our hallway, and we live in a very tiny little house in West Los Angeles. Um, in the hallway, there's a picture of Catherine with Jimmy Stewart and the cast of Fool's Parade, which was her first movie, his last. And, and then there's a picture of her in the hallway with Merlin Olson from Father Murphy. And that's where I met Catherine was when she was auditioning to play Merlin Olson's love interest on Father Murphy, which was Michael's spinoff of the Little House. So for for uh, for Merlin. So um, yeah, Little House is. Uh, to, but in terms of things in the house, no, we really don't have a lot of stuff in the house. But in my office, I'm allowed to keep some of these things. And, you know, there's a little wall that has a Little House poster and you know things that things that people have sent me through the years. I think there's a there's a a little a little pan with a cinnamon chicken and sitting on a file cabinet yeah. <laughs> that came while I was here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from you. Okay. Um, you had one last question, Beth. Did you say you have an outhouse, or do you have another bathroom? I guess you could call it modern with a sink and a toilet. <laughs> no, I don't. A thunder mug? <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> That's wild. What a... Okay. Well, we're we're pretty we're pretty tame now, yeah. Something from their lives. Uh, I'm sure they're very glad that they never had to use it again beyond a certain point. Uh, what a great place to finish. <laughs> All right, so you have one last question. Well, I just wanted to say, when I was a child, I went to my grandmother's farm in North Dakota. Grandma never had running water. She never had a bathroom. You know, she had a stove and a refrigerator, but that's as far as it went. Yeah. And we used, she'd say, go get your pot for the night. Yeah, take it out to the outhouse and everything. But when we were kids, we loved it there because we were playing Little House on the Prairie. And 
I did this till I was 18 years old. Yeah. And yeah. they never put ramps or never put anything in there. <laughs> and it, you know, it was really something to do when, you know, you're their age, you know, yeah. it's exciting. Wow. I'm so glad I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Really, I, yeah. I am glad I missed that. Um, listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for thank coming you. and spending some time with us and sitting in the hot sun. Um, glad you're here in Heritage Hill for the weekend. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah.